Ki nga maunga whakahi, ki nga awa whakateri tanifa o te motu, tēnā rā koutou katoa. Liriana taku manu, ke kauia atu, aku mehi, ki te hiku a te ika a Māui, ka liriano ki te upoko o te ika. Wai hoki, ka huri nga kupu mai oha ki te wai paunamu. O te rā, ka topa nga mehi ki nga tōpito kato o te ao, tēnā rā koutou katoa. E heke nga roi mata e tangi ana te nākau ki a rātou kua wehe atu ki te pō. Mō mai, moi mai, moi mai, moi mai rā. Ka rere te rau aroha ki nga whānau e noho kei raro i te kapua pauri ki a kaha, ki a maia, ki a manawa nui. Kua oti. Hoi anō, Ka huri a hau ki nga tāringa ari-ari mai i raro i nga kupu whakamanoa o te wā. He uri a hau o te waka o tainui, ko moi hau ki tai, ko te aroha ki uta, ko te kapa-kapa te moana, ko haura ki te whinua, ko tai me tuku ki no Campbell tōko ingoa, e mehi atu nei. E tuku anō nga kupu whakamehi mai i te tara o te ika a Māui, te tara o te whai, Ki a koutou, nga tangata e whakarongo pikari mai i tēnei pō. Nau mai, tauhiti mai i tēnei wānanga, ko te ao mārama, the promise of the Māori Health Authority, te kaupapa nei. Kia ora. This is a different presentation to the one originally advertised, and it is one of the 10-day Tetiti-based futures program, which includes an incredible lineup of speakers discussing topics including institutional racism, decolonisation, building a Tetiti-based future, and transforming our constitution. These are not topics for the faint-hearted, and nor are they freely discussed in our society. Uh, but they are around some of your uh, kitchen tables, I'm sure. I want to acknowledge the organisers of this forum have created the space for us to share and to learn from each other in a respectful way. So I'd like to draw your attention to the code of conduct that's been promoted for these forums. Uh, a code of conduct that I believe is really applicable in any forum, so please be afraid, feel free to take it with you. Before I introduce our speakers, I'd like to invite you to submit questions under the Q&A button, um, which we'll ask our guests to respond to later in the wānanga. So they're really keen to have a corridor with us, so we're going to have some time together with a short presentation and then an opportunity to have a corridor um, via Zoom. So if you wish to give feedback or share your thoughts, then please use the chat function as well. So in keeping with having courageous conversations, let's talk about the New Zealand health and disability system and the decades of disparities for Māori, the decades of avoidable morbidity and mortality for whānau, and the decades of Crown agencies and institutions' inability to give effect to tiriti, to, to tiriti or waitangi. Not until the Y2575 Hawara claim has there been a stake in the whenua which has said enough. The desire for self-determination of our health system has been loud and clear. In the, national, uh, in the National Health and Disability System Review, where both processes clearly seek transformation of the health and disability, disability sector for Māori. The establishment of the Māori Health Authority is in response to the cumulative failures of the system and to finally being heard. This will be the first time in our history we will have an opportunity to implement this level of transformational change, which I hope will be a catalyst across other Crown agencies. Uh, there have been many health reforms before, um, so many of us will be interested in what will be different. Equally, I'm sure there will, there will be a role for us as tangata tiriti and tangata whenua to play. Nō reira, uh, nā ku te hōnere um, whānau, it is my pleasure to introduce our speakers this evening. We're very lucky to have uh, two, the two co-chairs, Wahini Māori, uh, the good sign, um, in terms of how we start um, the new journey for the health system. Um, and um, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, uh, Sharon Shea, 
who's not Nati Ranginui, Nati Hawa, Nati Hine, and Nati Hako. So I just want to acknowledge the Hauraki part of Hu Whakapapa just there, who is the co chair um, for the Māori Health Authority and is also the representative for the Māori Health Authority on the Health New Zealand Board. I think that's a really important kind of um, point to make. Sharon has a conjoint degree, uh, a Bachelor of Arts and law and a master's in social policy. So a good preparation for her for the what she's been doing today, which has also um, contributed to her governance and leadership experience across the health and disability um, sectors. Uh, she's a board, she's been a board member, not for much longer though, of the Auckland DHB and Northland DHB, and she's been a board member of several other primary health community and other sector organizations. Um, I also wanted to acknowledge Sharon for her role as chair of the Māori Expert Advisory Group on the Health and Disability Sector Review, uh, where she and other members of the group went all around the motu talking to Māori, talking to Māori providers um, to make sure that their voice was heard. So I just want to acknowledge you for that, which culminated in the uh, Health and Disability uh, Systems Review. Um, under the, I guess, the also the um, leadership of um, Heather Simpson. I also want to welcome uh, Tipa Mahuta um, from Waikato, Manipoto and Ngāpuhi, um, who's the co-chair, also the co-chair for the Māori Health Authority. Tipa has a background in facilitation, research policy and community development. It's been complemented uh, with over 20 years in iwi, iwi governance experience and she still lives in her village, um, I, another good sign in terms of being connected to where you come from. She's currently the Deputy Chair on the county's Manukau District Health Board, not for much longer, and the Taumata Arawai Māori Advisory Group, a councillor with the Waikato Regional Council and co-chair for the Waikato River Authority. Um, so good to have the expertise that brings the, uh, the taiao into the conversation as well. So it is my great pleasure to introduce our two uh, board members from the Māori Health Authority. And before I hand over the rako to them, I just want to also acknowledge that they're supported by um, a very talented board. Uh, and I want to acknowledge the rest of the board members on the Māori Health Authority, who I think are also there to help make sure that we are creative, that we continue to make better change, um, and also to pick really good CEOs. So I want to commend you for doing that too. So more Māori Pacific women running the health sector. I think that's a good start. So over to our um, presenters for this evening. So I hand over to you first, Sharon. Oh, tipa. <laughs> So I just wanted to um, return the mihi to you, Taima, um, and to the, everybody that's facilitated us being here. I see we're on a long list of illustrious speakers. Nō reira mā, māua ko Sharon, kei te whaia tu e rā tapu ai. Ko ki atu ki apu, Sharon. Yeah, tēnā koutou kantua. Nga mihi nui, nga mahi, nga mahi aroha ki a koutou. Um, tēnā koe taima moto afi. Um, uh, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Um, thank you taima and, uh, and all who are, are and have been involved in this um, 
corridor, leading up to this corridor, I, I must um, uh, double down on Tippa's um, uh, mihi to all of the presenters uh, who have a very, very impressive lineup. In fact, I said to Tippa, oh, yeah, we better have something of value to say. <laughs> So, um, so hopefully we won't let any of you down, but uh, looking forward to the corridor kote. And I'm just going to share our slides and I think we will get cracking. Uh, Lord Ada, um, we just wanted to start by going backwards a little bit and we don't want to list all the many names, but every iwi um, and every profession um, that looks after Hauora has uh, many uh, people that have gone before us um, and have done the work basically for generations, which is why we've survived pandemics and influenza and got here today. But not only that, but they've built, I guess, the promise of what we can do for ourselves in the sector. More recently, it was the panel led by Ta Mason, um, that I formed an advisory to give effect to, I guess, the recommendations and our appointment as the Māori Health Authority. So, again, I uh, want to honour the contributions of everybody. All of you have someone in your takiwa that you know they were the person that led um, this kōrero for you, not, not, not only the claimants, but all the many practitioners and people that have given service. Um, over these difficult years as well. So just ngā mihi nui kia koutou te tematanga and to all of those that have gone before us. So we just wanted to uh, have, have a short background conversation with you so that we can probably dive deeper with you about the, the more important conversation as we're to next. Um, but for those of you that have been watching uh, with the reforms intently, uh, we are lucky because Sharon was part of the review process itself. So I've been in the conversation for a long time um, with that perspective. So we've got from May 2018 to April this uh, last year and the steps taken by the government to give effect to, I guess, the findings of the commissioning the report, the refine uh, the findings, and then planning a, a way forward. That yes, does mean um, this was all lined up prior to the um, pandemic, and really, uh, COVID, if anything, over the last couple of years has given more impetus again to your introduction primer to the um, and equities that people have faced over this last couple of years. So just really built on the reasons why we're doing what we're doing. Tēnā kui, Sharon. But uh, essentially, these are the main findings, the main, main drivers of the review. Nothing new there for everybody that's on this call. We're just calling out a few, I guess, um, how how not giving effect to the treaty looks across the system um, in every space you can say that just basically undermines opportunities at each step. Not only that opportunities are one aren't identified or followed through on or under invested in. So again, we don't need too many more levers um, as to why the 10 year um, gap and life um, expectancy is probably all a condition of all these uh, various, again, systemic uh, intricacies at play. But I don't have to take, uh, talk to the converted about that. We all know to some degree of what, what's happening there. Um, the, sector, the disability review itself found that uh, the system was indeed a bit clunky and chunky in places, and we were still getting lost in it. Um, no one could identify, I guess, uh, where the inequity started and ended. So it's, uh, it's systemic. There, there is no one cause. Um, the system leadership and accountability mechanisms didn't lead to change or fundamental change in those places that would have seen improved Mighty House. Planning and commissioning um, and the 20 DHB way was not leveraged to support Mighty House outcomes. And Again, we're in the position where every DHB is uh, scratching its ass. It's very hard to have find sustainable gains. So, 
So again, uh, just pointing out where all the different gaps are, but each one is an opportunity to lose more Māori confidence in the system. Not only Māori confidence, but there's probably uh, our, our tangata whaikaha. Um, there's a whole lot of uh, groups in the equation, not only uh, Māori, Pacific Island, disabled and uh, the rural um, communities where not only socioeconomic determinants, but access, quality and inequity um, all play out to some degree in Aotearoa New Zealand today, which um, again, none of us will have a bar off. So that's what we're all about this conversation tonight and changing it. So well again, just a chaos question. Thank oh, you. sorry. See, we've practiced. <laughs> Past the rako, here it comes. Yeah, so, kia ora everyone. Um, look, a couple of things. Um, uh, so, just leveraging off what Tipper had, had said, and of course, with the um, Simpson report, which, which sets uh, the shifts in motion, and then uh, the transition unit was set up, uh, headed by Stephen McKernan, and then we have had the um, our very competent Chad Parane in there uh, holding the fort for all of us. And as part of that mahi and moving into the announcements um, leading up to um, from April to September, which is when the uh, Interim Māori Health Authority Board was uh, announced, um, there was the launch of these five system shifts. And it, as you can see, the first one is um, the health system will reinforce te tiriti principles um, and obligations. So that's the first system shift that has been signalled as part of this um, transition, uh, part of this process from transition to transformation. And then the other system shifts, um, which are really important for us to, one, be aware of, but to hold on to because the system shifts signalled are actually part of our levers for change and, and Tibber and I are going to talk about that in a moment. But the second one um, is certainly about access. So um, equitable ac access uh, as a concept is, is certainly uh, in play here, but this is also about uh, a comprehensive range of support. So you'll be familiar with the corridor around localities and how localities are important concepts moving forward. So localities are geographic areas uh, and then associated with those geographic areas will be comprehensive networks of services, uh, which would be not just specific to health, but also intersectoral. And we can talk a little bit about, about that um, if, if you want to. The third one is access to uh, hospital and specialist care, emergency and specialist care. And again, some of the early corridor, and it won't be new to all of you, is about ensuring that we don't have unwarranted uh, variation in um, access and, and, and clinical quality of the, cl the clinical quality of services and things like that. So that's certainly something that we've got our eye on. The fourth one is digital services. So everyone's a software developer now, so <laughs> we're all pulling out, pulling out our software engineers, but um, digital services are an important part of a modern transformational health service or health system, I should say, um, or oranga system, actually, we should say. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit moving forward. But certainly it's part of the new way of delivering, uh, not, well, notwithstanding that, you know, we're of the clear view that um, mobile services, you know, kanohi, kite kanohi, all those types of things are critically important, if not more important. And we've seen that through the mahi delivered um, in the uh, COVID scenario with the more permissive um, settings and the ability for our Māori providers and others to shine in terms of how they delivered services to Māori and um, New Zealanders. And then the fifth um, system shift is about our workforce and valuing our workforce and also um, getting ready uh, in terms of, you know, the future and what a transformational system might look like. And for those of you and us who are working, but in particular for our, front, our valued frontline workers, you know, it's been hard and it's, it's, um, it's, it just seems like it's getting harder. So uh, we just acknowledge you, mihi to you, and um, we can talk a little bit about our plans in that space as well. So these five system shifts are um, what is driving the, um, the, the overarching reform. Um, this is our awesome board and um, 
uh, uh, time you um, acknowledged our, our full board. So we are an interim authority uh, from the 1st of July post the passing of the Pai order legislation. Um, <clears throat> we, well, the, the Māori Health Authority will, will become um, a formal legal entity at the moment. We're a Section 11 committee. For those of you who love to dabble in the um, policy uh, uh, in, in Wellington, the policy speak. However, we do have uh, a role, scope and function, and we do have direct commissioning. And um, there was an announcement the other day, many of you would have seen Tipper in um, announcing with the minister the uh, 22 million, which is um, one of several announcements, actually, um, everyone, which, which will be coming. So watch this space. Um, and of course, uh, part of uh, a big push for this corridor is, is uh, linked to racism. I just want to chuck up a couple of uh, uh, definitions. And uh, we're still forming and storming. So we got appointed in September last year. Um, Timer alluded to our illustrious CEO, who um, <clears throat> we, I don't know what the, pro the most appropriate word is, but we lovingly welcomed her into the uh, Māori Health Authority from, from Hauraki. So, and um, I just noticed one of the questions. Um, so Rihanna, Rihanna Manuel is a nurse uh, by profession. So um, I noticed one of the questions around uh, the lack of nursing voice, but um, well, there you go. We've, we've purposely point, appointed a Māori nurse as the CEO. So hopefully um, uh, to the, the person who asked that question, you'll give us a pass on that one. Uh, but certainly we um, are very aware, acutely aware of Māori workforce voice across all uh, professions. So um, we are working hard to incorporate uh, professional voice and other voice. And, and again, we'll talk about that in a moment. But just thinking about these definitions and they're just um, initial uh, ones for us. We haven't formally adopted these as a board because we're still forming our approach, but certainly um, we've got a zero tolerance for bias, discrimination and racism. And I loved the work that was recently done um, by, by Smith et al. that was last year regarding everyday experiences of racism by Māori whānau. So this was um, across the board and um, very powerful research which talked about anything from, um, you know, um, kai to um, employment and all those types of things. Uh, it's a very good piece of research. And they defined racism there as, um, and we've just adapted it slightly, but uh, an, at an attack on tiriti embedded rights and, and the principle of tenoranga tiratanga which includes maintaining colonial power structures, which systematically disadvantage Māori. And what I liked about that um, definition uh, uh, was that it really contextualised racism within the context of Aotearoa and Indigenous um, issues. So I just wanted to um, leverage off that as part of our uh, discussion moving forward. And then, of course, we've got a lot of work to do in terms of institutional or systemic racism and how that manifests itself in practice from monocultural thinking right through to, um, you know, uh, the, the everyday processes and, and the way that services are delivered and approaches are delivered, including clinical pathways and things like that. Now, having said all that, we do know that there are pockets of um, excellence threaded throughout the health um, system. Uh, and we also know that we do have very powerful uh, non-Māori allies so we'd like to have a discussion about how we might be able to join forces and create this transformational system that um, we've worked all worked um, so hard to get here. And now we want to move forward. So I'm just going to pull up another slide. Um, if I can get my thing. Now, <clears throat> um, Tippa and I are going to talk about this together, but um, part of the work that was done in the transition unit and part of the uh, mahi that we continue to do and as Tipa said, leveraging off all, um, we stand on the shoulders of many others, including yourselves. Um, we've just noted here 24 levers for change, which the Māori Health Authority and um, Health New Zealand will be uh, utilising. And I'm just going to uh, run through the first um, 13 just very quickly and then um, Tipa can 
we'll do the 14 to 24, but really the opportunity for us to, is to socialize what these are and then have a conversation with you, hopefully about um, other examples, other levers, other opportunities. Of course, there are multiple things embedded within um, each of these headings. So you'll excuse me if we don't get into too much um, detail that in the in-depth stuff, but first of all, legislation is a critical uh, lever for us. So the pie order bill is going through, it's going to um, come into, a for, into force on the 1st of July. Now there is a TDT clause in there and actually there are bling and tons of reform going on and tons of kōrero about what a TDT clause um, looks like, but we can tell you that we've worked hard to ensure we can get the strongest one we possibly can. Um, but I just wanted to say that this is legislation is one of several levers. Um, so we're, we're really looking to maximize the value of what levers we can pull to create change. But part of that is uh, putting into place, into place the different bodies like the Māori Health Authority, Health New Zealand, and also the Iwi Māori Partnership Boards, um, which we'll touch on very briefly, policy. So the Māori Health Authority has a policy shop. Uh, now, we've never had a national policy shop like the one that we're going to have in the Māori Health Authority. We have had wonderful people uh, working on policy in um, government agencies, but as you know, there's never been a national Māori Health Authority before. So we have a policy, policy shop and we intend to make sure that that's very um, strong and we leverage that to the max in terms of how we might be able to influence not just health policy but also intersectoral policy associated with um, determinants including commercial determinants as well so I didn't want to miss that one off or else Sue and Matarodia would say will say to me why didn't you say commercial determinants <laughs> um, partnership so our partnership with Health New Zealand, um, Tipper and I and the full board have worked really hard to make sure that we've established a, um, a credible working relationship. And, and I can say to you now that we have, uh, we have a very close working relationship with Rob Campbell, who's the chair and also board to board. So for example, we have joint working groups at board level operating right now, looking at finance, looking at strategy, looking at planning, looking at capital, looking at um, commissioning, looking at systems. So um, we're working really hard to make sure that the joint boards shape what the system looks like and also shapes um, uh, mahi associated with those five system shifts. Um, in terms of um, um, also external partnerships, so we'll be working on external partnerships as well, not just partnerships within the health system. Uh, and that includes uh, talking about what Tiba said, uh, building partnerships with our valued um, hunga haua uh, community and, and others. Um, whānau voice and agency is really important to us. So we are really pushing um, the kōrero that uh, we want whānau uh, to be direction setters, not passive recipients of care as some would perceive them to be. Um, so obviously we'll continue to carry on the great work uh, uh, created by all of you around building whānau capability. Uh, certainly that's a, a strong um, approach for us, but also recognising that whānau are their own expert, experts, whānau are agents of change in their own right, and the health system needs to respect that and, and support that and enable and everything else we can do. The waka haurua and te tiriti framing uh, really just speaks for itself, but we, we are adapting a waka haurua um, framing, but we, what we want to do is we want to actually make that a living, um, breathing waka that uh, creates the opportunity for both HNZ, um, Māori Health Authority and all our other partners who are in the fleet um, heading towards the same destination. So we're using that as part of our, um, as part of our approach. We have strategy arms, so we get to not only look at um, policy, but also strategy. So we're working hard in terms of the New Zealand health plan, for example, um, and to frame that within a TDT, uh, within TDT, but also uh, understanding how we might be able to effect change, not just within a Maori health context or an oranga context, but across the whole system. Um, so planning, so we have a, we'll have a planning arm. We are focusing on life course outcomes, not just inputs and outputs. So any of you who um, I've had the pleasure of working with know that you know that I love outcomes and data. So, um, and so do heaps of other people. So that's awesome. But life course outcomes are 
a really important part of our view and also where we're going to invest. So thinking about investing, co-commissioning and direct commissioning. So we have a direct commissioning role. So we have our own budget um, and we will commission services uh, and solutions associated with that and, and Tipa um, with the ministers and uh, Rihanna and Rob announced um, the first of that the other day. So um, as part of that, and I'm going to jump to number 12, we are talking about investing quite significantly in Te Ao Māori solutions and services. So um, Rungoa is a really good example, but it's not just Rungoa. So we will be talking about um, a real steep Mātauranga, Te Ao Māori. Um, it's a given that those wonderful, that Mātauranga, that Te Ao Māori solutions, it's a given that they are um, not only valued, but completely necessary. So one of our core roles, which we've never had before, is to invest and grow and expand and scale Te Ao Māori solutions. So we're just really thrilled about that and looking forward to, to supporting those um, who deliver those the best to be and those services to be scaled. We also have a co-commissioning role. So that basically means we work um, with Health New Zealand and potentially with others um, whom, of whom we are uh, yet to build relationships with. But let me just talk about Health New Zealand. So, um, you know, people say to me, oh, what's your budget, Sharon? You know, come on, what's your budget? And I, I say unapologetically $20 billion because our role is, is not just to directly commission the mahi uh, the, with the putia we have. Our role is to influence a whole of system change associated with oranga. So um, we are unapologetic about our role in terms of co-commissioning uh, with Health New Zealand as our partner, and we potentially have others um, which will which we are yet to develop but to seek to. I'll just speed up a bit. Um, Iwi Māori Partnership Boards are based in localities. They are um, leveraging off the best of existing um, uh, partnership relationship boards with um, district health boards, but the team has been working hard to understand how we might be able to um, accelerate those in terms of their own capacity, um, you know, the resources that they, they that they need to thrive in terms of local decision making, how they work in terms of influencing local commissioning, and they bring that expertise and that voice um, to the table. So those are being established as we speak, and then performance of other services is really important for us. So. We have a whole system performance management role, um, and we also seek to influence uh, the performance of non-Māori services for Māori. And if any of you heard Tom Mason the other day, he was talking about the importance of the Māori Health Authority having an overview of the whole system and, and lifting, seeking to support the lifting of the system. But I just before I hand over to Tipper, I just wanted to say the success of the transformed system is not the sole accountability of the Māori Health Authority, it is the accountability of everyone in the health system, um, including um, um, our, our value partners, Health New Zealand and other partners as well. So I just wanted to leave that little line and um, I'll hand over to my um, co-chair Tipo to talk about um, the other levers. Kia ora Tipo. Um, kia ora Sharon. I, I totally support uh, Boost 13 and anything. This is just doubling down on that. Uh, totally support Sharon that we expect to comment on the whole of the system, uh, its budget, um, the decisions made around that, and we'll be part of the decision making, we'll have ownership of that. Uh, we want to work with our providers and develop what they've been asking for forever and a day is more investment in their success. So that's something that we want to see through, as well as working on the generational workforce um, plans that need to occur to have, again, stabilise the Māori workforce and their own um, wellbeing. Not only the workforce, but IMPVs, everybody that should have taken a role in health by now, we, we want to fast track that opportunity, um, whether it be clinicians and or administration, decision making governance, um, including shadowing opportunities and things like that. Again, 18 and 19 are where the health sector uh, system is going in every country in the world. Know what we know, perform better and keep the data um, flowing around that. But not only that, all the digital um, opportunities that exist to extend the reach of our oranga planning. 
Um, there's a huge tr uh, change management process that no doubt if you're in the system or outside of a system as big as health, would wonder um, what magic wand do they have to do this. But in terms of one of the changes that we must see come through is the removal of systemic racism within the system and how we might do that is some of the tonight's conversation. Some of changing the narrative of mind shifts, mind shift, mind sex shifts, I don't know why, is both sides of the table. Um, Māori as consumers have to believe in the products, um, have to, again, rebuild their trust and confidence in the health system. So those are the types of relationships we need, uh, in our Māori households, but also in the system itself. Uh, we'll need capital investments. Um, again, how do we do that um, in a smart community way? Um, whether it's in a rural community or in town, how do we build resources that the community um, can truly rally around? Um, Chair, talk to all the different people who must work uh, with, but there's been a lot of talks about how, um, for example, health is a one one of the conversations we must have, but it's after housing, employment, and all the other conversations. So it's a health um kia ora tipa. i think your mic something's happened with your mic i'm just can wondering you hear me now? um you hear me now? um it's sounding a little distance you're like you know you're a long way away so i'm not sure what happened up okay. here okay Carl, um, what, I'll what? I'll change. I'll just change my settings. Okay, and I think um, you've got your headsets on, so I'm just wondering if something happened there. I think it's just not used to being on at this time of night. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that better? Yes, that's it. I don't know why. I'm not sure how much you missed, but I don't want to rehash it. We can answer those in the Q and A's. Okay. Okay, Akwe Sharon. Yeah, kia ora, um, Tipa. So, um, I, look, I, was, I see there's heaps of Q and A. So, um, I really would like to engage in some of that. But really, that was just the end of the corridor. Everybody, I mean, it's a light touch. There's tons of stuff. Um, as I said, underneath each of those headings. Can I just say, uh, I was trying to scroll through the Q&A um, for the research part uh, That's that's definitely huge for us. I actually on a couple of research boards, actually. Um, the translational aspect of that is the thing that we need to get um, better at. And um, because we've got, we're like a, a, a te whike. We've got all these um, arms everywhere. So I'm hoping that through um, our policy, our strategy, our planning, our investment, all that kind of stuff, we're actually going to um, utilize uh, research and, and make it translational really quickly, um, especially with some of the wonderful stuff that's being um, done at the moment, which I'm fortunate to get to know of because I'm on a couple of boards. So yeah, I well, just wanted to quickly say that. Sounds like research and evaluation is number 25. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't in order. <laughs> No, it's the last oh, bring part. it out. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It's under intelligence, actually, but yeah, I, I, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I agree with you. There's a, a lot of questions in there, and I can see some common themes. Um, I was listening to Donna Awatere's presentation the other night, and she talked about how um, exam she gave examples of how the master allowed Māori um, some space and then strangled innovation through... Mm. Um, policies and funding um, and so you know and so we got you know so far and then we stopped and I think she used the kohanga reo, kura kaupapa you know and our wānanga, wānanga development but I think yeah Māori providers are the same so I guess there's a question that aligns also with the fact that you know what can be done can be undone you know can you talk to me a little bit about you know what if national or some other politician gets in and says no nope, we're going to pull that back, we're going to tighten that up, or we're going to stop it all together. You know, what's the provisions in place to keep this going over a period of time? Because it's going to take years to get this right. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, do you want to go to them and then I'll support you? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, so he, the comments have been made um, and people are worried about the survival of the authority. So there's a defensive um, play uh, as well. Um, but uh, I guess I'd, I'd have to trust and believe that the Aotearoa New Zealand that we live in isn't about smoothing the pillow anymore and that, it, that we'd be far too, um, again, um, not righteous in our rights, but we, we, we're there already. Um, treaty settlements, kohanga and kura, the institutions that you'd um, given a good decade. In the first decade, they have results. In the first generation, they change Māori them. And that's why we can have today's conversation. So, uh, yes, political will could change this. Do we have enough um, strength and fortitude in our nation, uh, in, in, I guess, Māori political consciousness? I think we do. I think there's general agree agreement that there has to be a new tool in town. People may um, quibble about whether it's an authority with limited rights or extra rights because we're still crown adjacent. Um, so we're not all uh, all the way over there in the Manamotuhake lane. So I think that's, that's the next step out. But um, so we'll have an active parliament. People can do what they do to unravel that. Uh, we could be victims of our own success and underfunded in the future. Um, underfunded without all the outcomes being reached would not be the goal. So I think my indicator is is that other than um, one very pre-campaign com comment by the new leader of National, um, every, every other party's been silent about it. They're waiting for us, I guess, to be the proof in the pudding. Um, and we're a long couple of political years away from the next election. Will we become the clickbait at the next election, only if we get things wrong, so incumbent on us to do things 150% better. But I guess if I was to express one frustration, it's um, we're likely to save fresh water for the whole of Aotearoa New Zealand, Māori, through our goals in Kaitiakitanga. We're likely to do that for health too, but no one will thank us for it on the way through. Kia ora, Sharon. Kia ora. <laughs> I love some of that korero, um, to the Look, I've... Um, um, been through several cycles. I mean, a, a timer. We've had like I don't know. We've been through four or five health restructures, and um, look, there's uh, a, a, and through all of those, through all of those, doesn't matter what party's been in, we've continued to create avenues of success because that's who we are. We we can't be reliant on left or right or middle or stuff. We just go for it. And um, we create opportunities and avenues for success, and that's our um, that's our opportunity as well. But you know, we're up to building relationships, so um, there's no problem there, and uh, we will continue to do so. Kapai, and I think we have to remember um, other initiatives like Fana Water um, got the same level of critique, and that's not going anywhere either. Um, there's quite a few questions around the legislation and uh, the focus really around uh, does the legislation embed the treaty principles or tertiary articles? And I just want you to comment a little bit about, I guess, where the Pi Order Bill is going to be going, but also how that translates into the New Zealand health plans and all those other documents that also drive the behaviour and the system change. Yeah. Uh, we, we Oh. You go, you go to that. Yeah. So we uh, we landed as the Pyota legislation was started uh, on its final way through the house. So we gave some advice around that, um, wanting to be very clear with Crown law that the treaty uh, treaty and its principles was our preferred, I guess, starting off point. Um, so that you know, space wouldn't get lost in between. We've had um, again, they're still working out the detail of how that might sound, and its final. Essence. And I don't doubt that it's going to fall short of where we need it to be, but um, given that the whole ledge will get reviewed in the next three to five, that's where we get to sharpen the saw. But it starts with treaty, um, with the understanding that the principles that um, the Y claimants are talking about and, and the specificity around that was included in that understanding. But I'll hand it over to you, Sharon. I think I got that yeah, one no, right. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Um, uh, if you look at Fakamoa, for example, you know um, where they've articulated the articles and then um, the articles and the principles, 
um, you know, that's a, that's a, a legacy and living document that um, we'll certainly be picking up as well. I guess the um, other issue is um, it's about how smart we are in terms of the articulation of articles and principles, isn't it? And then what that looks like in practice. So um, don't you worry, we're working on that. And um, have we got some um, awesome surprises for you? <laughs> um, on a similar note, is there any other legislation that also needs to change to give effect to all the um, work that's going to change in terms of system change? So I think the ACC legislation came up and there probably are some other acts. I'm just wondering, how we, we start here and how it moves across other pieces of legislation as well. We've had that um, initial quarter as an authority and thought, well, you know, you've got to put all the uh, wellbeing acts all alongside each other to see how we can be good agents, for, um, work that agency across all the wellbeings, whether it's housing, education, just you name it. <clears throat> so that's... Uh, again, that's the long game. In the meantime, we are providing advice to uh, this government's wellbeing committee so that it can be seen alongside all the other advice that might come up. Um, again, uh, the silo system has never helped us, but we're trying to cause as much integrated cordial or an oranga wellbeing cordial as we can just to anchor that that, that action on. But Kaku Sharon. Yeah, that's right. And um, I think with our also with our policy, policy shop, our strategy shop, all those, you know, a phenomenal team who gives us the type of insights and intelligence that, that we've never seen before in a timely way that we can influence others. You know, all of those are practical demonstrations of tertivity. Um, the other thing is that we are in different places and spaces, uh, as, I, as are all of you. So, you know, it's our obligation, it's our mutual obligation really to be ensuring that wherever we are, we can seek to influence. Um, so for example, I'm um, doing some work in the unemployment insurance space. So, and there's some legislation coming up for that. Kapoi. Um, there's some other questions really about how will hapu and iwi um, really have voice in terms of getting their needs, you know, identifying what their needs are and how that will happen. And I guess maybe that's what the role, you know, and what's the role really around uh, the iwi partnership boards and the localities in terms of meeting those needs. Just wonder if you could comment on that. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll start from the, uh, so whānau voice is what's leveraged in the system and uh, whānau voice, uh, wherever it sits, so, Again, um, we have that, we have Matawaka that live in our, in our rohe that we look after. Um, their voices is as important as the mana whenua that live at home or live away from home. So how do we leverage all those voices in for maximum impact? And that's the growth and leadership that we want to, um, I guess, see in our communities, how to have those long uh, life course and life changing conversations and sponsor families through to their success. So that, that's a key, uh, that's something that the Iwi Māori partnerships have to facilitate that kind of robust conversation and feed through into their planning. And then they leverage off some of the, um, I guess, the ways we can implement that voice into the system. But I'll, I'll pass that on to Sharon how um, Iwi Māori partnership boards and localities will work together for that. Yeah, thanks, Tipa. And um, can I just go back to the statement around um, whānau, whānau voice as direction setters, not, not as, you know, perceived um, uh, passive recipients of care. We're really serious about that. And so we're looking for every opportunity we can to leave a um, whānau voice um, within the, the health system and beyond, actually. So, um, so I just wanted to reiterate that. In terms of the uh, Iwi Māori Partnership Boards, so, so um, they are uh, leveraging off existing um, relationships. So we know that, you know, across the mutu there are existing relationships with, um, with DHB certainly, and, and obviously they won't be around um, post 30 June. But one of the things that we are really mindful of is that in um, DHB, land, not in every case, but um, there was a, um, uh, in some relationships, maybe majority, 
you'll have to speak to the um, iwi who uh, are in those relationships now. But um, there was, uh, we did observe and have observed over time some quite sort of paternalistic approaches where, you know, um, the boards were, were staffed of information and resources really. And in some cases were quite actively managed in terms of what they could see and what they couldn't and decisions that they could participate in and couldn't. Um, that wasn't uh, consistent across, but certainly there were those traits. And so our um, objective is to um, have zero tolerance for that actually, and to respect the integrity, not only of the relationship between the Iwi Māori Partnership Boards at a locality level, but also to create the space for them to grow um, and to have a greater say. So um, whilst their primary uh, focus will be at locality, um, they will be influencing at a regional level as well. And plus via relationships with us, we can also elevate that national voice. So um, again, the strength of that mechanism, we, will, we, we haven't seen before. And um, one of the roles of the Māori Health Authority is to manaki um, and support the Iwi Māori Partnership Board. So, you know, they've got everything they need to be the decisive decision makers that, um, that, that they should be. Oh, we're, and we've got more questions coming, but it would be amiss of me not to ask a question around, um, I guess, the plans or the thoughts about Māori workforce and provider development. I'm assuming that that's high on the list. Um, is there, uh, and we, we heard a little bit about basically the NPDS funding just being repackaged and sent out. What, what can we expect in the next wee while in terms of being able to support our workforce? I'll, I'll, I'll start and, and, and tip it and follow. One of the um, uh, issues for, I mean, we all know it. So there's pipeline issues, there's getting our whānau in the workforce, supporting our whānau in the workforce or in training, um, building opportunities moving forward. Then there's retention, recruitment, um, career development, all those types of things, leadership roles, governance roles, um, et cetera, et cetera. I'm really excited about, so we're okay with all of that. It's all important and we, we want to make a difference. I um, am really a fan of, uh, uh, for example, uh, utilizing opportunities to enable a new workforce to come through. And let's, let's take the lay vaccinators in the COVID space, lay swabbers and stuff like that, subject to um, quality parameters. And you know, if, if they're taking on um, roles that um, our valued nurses um, you know, uh, a need to free up or, or, or other allied health, for example, it's not just in the nursing space, then we should go for it. Because um, whilst we want to grow our value clinical workforce um, at every level and to the max, we know that um, we can also grow another workforce um, which supports the, de the de delivery of the bahi in a way that we've never seen before. And I think that creates a window um, for us to really escalate that. So we know that we've got um, immunisation challenges coming up in terms of, um, you know, flu and MMR and all that kind of stuff. And again, subject to quality parameters, we should really utilise this opportunity, this permissive opportunity to really double down in that space and, and do more. Just in the um, provider side of things, we want to scale, we want to invest, we want to create, we want to, we want to um, nurture innovation, all those types of things. And now we've finally got the opportunity to say yes because we've got our own putia and we're going to influence across the system. So this is the time for us to actually maximise the opportunities for a scale and a size of Māori um, provider and service development that we've um, never seen before. Yeah, okay, thanks, Claire. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just hand over to um, Tipa. Uh, yes, yeah, so creating more opportunities for... Um, workforce and provider development, including looking at how to partner with, I guess, our leaders in the sector, creating centres for excellence so we get there quickly. We don't have to wait a generation to take, take people through their leadership journey um, or for people to survive uh, any system to get there. We want to actually, as Karen was saying, provide the, the pathway to those things. Um, one of the centres of excellence that's been proposed is talking about um, the promotion of equity and other things. And again, that might not be just in our field. So there's a whole lot of work that we must do together with other experts in the in the oranga space uh, so that we're all 
talking the same way because we have the same client, vulnerable whānau. So, kia ora. And I just, oh, kia ora. And I just get some guidance from my moderator. I think we're coming to the end of our time, but we just want to keep on going, I can tell. And there's so many more questions that are coming through. Um, I guess uh, what will happen is the questions will be um, collated and sent through. And I know that you are interested in um, sort of seeing what they are. Um, and so I can, that will be kind of useful to share. I think it's also useful to know, and maybe it's a communication for the authority, just to let people know how else they can contribute to anything that's happening in the future. Um, so, you know, what we know is that, you know, there's a lot of work to be done around the business as usual stuff that has to be done as well as what we're doing in the future. So if you think there's some opportunities for how people might be able to participate, I think that would be um, good for our crew to know. Um, but I think it's, um, um, and, and I'm just waiting for our, our moderator to say, do I need to wrap up now or can we ask one more question? Well, you're figuring that out time, I'll just say that um, we're, we're getting our comms crowd on board this week. So we expect that we'll have to run a lot more um, webinars and online forums because, again, there's a lot of us in the workforce. We're a lot of us with interest. There's a lot of us. Um, that have particular needs within health that need somewhere to talk about it. So we'll be creating those online forums. We've done one round of 16 Mighty partnership boards so far. Um, that's without going to all the different workforce groups and Māori providers. So again, um, everyone wants first generation outcomes in the first five minutes. Um, <laughs> We're asking for just five minutes to get it set up right, Fane. Um, and this time next year, you can all say not jump higher, not enough. But if we get the knitting right and we get all the data stock that Sharon's talking about um, in an efficient way, I think that's the best help we can be to Māori providers in the first instance because then we're all dealing from this adding to um, this... Um, knowledge base that actually progresses mighty them and I, and I'm, I mean it not like in a big waffly five years time thing I think just if we invest in, in that as a first step then we know what we're talking about in, in real meaningful ways and we don't have to prove it to anyone else but ourselves so note that um, everyone that said it's a once in a lifetime opportunity get it right um, that's our goal so anyway Tom have I given you enough time to figure out what we're doing now okay. this has been we're allowed to go over time a little bit, but um, I, I think that what I'm what I, it's really good to hear is that there'll be more opportunity and more forums um, for everyone to participate because I think that's really what people are really keen to hear. And it's not just Māori, it's um, non-Māori. Uh, um, you know, our, our allies here are wanting to know how they can contribute and how they can support the Kaupapa as well. Um, I was reading a lot of the pie order submissions, you know, for my sins. Um, and I looked through a lot of the professional associations and medical associations, very supportive of change. So I think we were all um, agreed that we need to make some change, but it's figuring out now the details around it. Um, so I just wanted to acknowledge uh, both of you and um, the board that you're representing. Um, I guess the change that you are bringing, um, the fresh ideas, the approach and the authenticity to actually engaging, um, you know, more authentically and, you know, at this level with Fano. So I think it's, uh, um, um, I'm hopeful um, for the future. And um, I guess really having been in the sector for a wee while, um, I've seen some changes that I sort of think that was never going to work. So I wouldn't say that about anything else, but I am hopeful about this kaupapa. Um, and I'm, I'd like to acknowledge the leadership you have in place. There was one last question, um, and I wondered about it myself. From the 1st of July, all the DHB staff go over to the Health New Zealand. Um, who have you got coming into the Māori Health Authority to support this kaupapa? Sharon, do you want to? Yeah, so um, <laughs> quite a few people, actually. We haven't got 80,000, though. Uh, <laughs> we're a bit, a bit short on the 80,000 mark because that's the um, people that work in the system. Um, so just a couple of things, um, Taima, if you don't mind, I'm just going to circle back to just reinforce that equity is not our destination. It's just a stepping stone. It's a stepping stone towards oranga. So I just wanted to say that because um, 
Um, sometimes it often gets confused as the endpoint, and we're really clear that's not our endpoint. Okay. Um, it, it's it's just a, you know part of it. it's one of our um, stars in our in our destination. So just say that. Um, so we're uh, um, oh gosh, uh, Rihanna is uh, starting to formalize the organizational model. So we're, we're in the process of that. And um, we have got um, staff transferring from the Ministry of Health. So we've got a portion of staff there. And then we've got um, staff coming to us from the district health boards. Um, and we're just finalizing that as we speak. But in terms of we want the most gruntiest, <laughs> amazing operational team that we can get our hands in. So anybody who uh, has got a CV, chuck it our way, please, because this is our, and you don't have, it's, it's whoever's got the, um, um, the, the commitment, um, the understanding and the passion, we, we want to work, we want to work with you to make a difference. So we've got our own team. And then of course, we're working across HNZ and we've got a um, unique relationship there, but I'm not going to say anything about that now because um, Rihanna and Margie are negotiating what that might look like, but it's that's also very exciting. Kapai. That sounds like a nice place to leave things. It's a recruitment plug at the end. <laughs> <laughs> Kapai. All right. And so, Naku te honore, um, Kōrua. It's been great to have uh, this opportunity with you, and uh, we look forward to, uh, I guess, having more Kōrero in the future. Um, so before we wrap up, I just want to acknowledge um, all the team that have brought um, this kaupapa, not just tonight. Um, we've got our moderators and our tech support in the background, um, but all the other people and volunteers that have been part of the utility based Futures program over the last wee while. We've still got another week um, full of programs, so if you haven't had a chance to look at what else is available, do go and have a look. It's beautiful corridor. Some great stories, some really sad stuff, but also, you know, a great opportunity for us to remember and reflect about why we are all here and what we're trying to achieve. Um, and then at the end of it, there's a great big sort of marathon of talking going on um, at the very end on the weekend, um, which I think um, we can share the detail about that. But um, we will be, um, this recording will be available um, sometime shortly up, up on the um, YouTube and Facebook page. Please go to the Facebook page for Tiriti Based Futures and like. I've sent that to lots of my friends um, and that's why I think they kind of, kind of got here because I think it's a great forum for sharing. Um, and then really just want to close um, to kind of whakakapi uh, tēnei wāhanga he mihi anō ki a koutou um, nā, tāring, uh, nā tāringa ari ari mai um, ki tēnei kaupapa. Uh, ka tuku au he karaki ki te whakakapi ana tēnei wahanga. Uh, hiketia, 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 te rongo mai whiti o tēnei hui, tuku a kia ea, tuku a kia oi, ko rangi nui ki ronga, ko papa tua nuku ki raro, tūturu whakamaua kia tēna, tēna. Haumie, hui e. Tai ki. Pumari e koutou.